Good afternoon. Eight years ago, I embarked on a research journey that involved vessels and containers. In 2008, I was commissioned by the then Ministry of Fisheries, now the Ministry of Primary Industries, to undertake research into the fishing industry. The Ministry of Fisheries was very keen to understand the extent of New Zealand caught fish that was shipped offshore for added value processing. So fish that was headed, gut, headed and gutted, frozen, and then sent to China to processing sites for value added processing. The, fin the final product was then refrozen and shipped to New Zealand's key export markets um, in the European Union and also in North America. Final product was even brought back here and sold in the New Zealand market. From that project, I developed a comprehensive research agenda which has resulted in a number of collaborative initiatives, both with colleagues at the University of Auckland and also internationally. Glenn Simmons, a PhD student at the time, was my research assistant on the Ministry of Fisheries project. While undertaking the research for the Ministry of Fisheries, we identified a business model in the deep sea fishing industry that was based on cost minimization and for some, the exploitation of migrant labor abroad foreign charter vessels through forced labor practices. When we completed the Ministry of Fisheries project, Simmons and I undertook research into labor abuses in the foreign charter vessel sector in New Zealand's deep sea industry. These were vessels that were fishing in New Zealand waters on behalf of New Zealand companies and agents. Our research focused primarily on the South Korean foreign charter vessels and the abuses aboard some of those vessels. These were vessels that were crewed by migrant crew from elsewhere in Asia. We identified extensive labour and human rights abuses, indeed forced labour practices, occurring on board a number of South Korean vessels. We are talking about physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, the non-payment of wages, appalling working and living conditions aboard these vessels, and other forced labour practices. Our findings were initially reported in a working paper co-authored with Darren Colston entitled Not in New Zealand Waters Surely. The title reflected in my part my horror that conditions such as these that we had found were occurring in New Zealand. The research that that working paper reflects, or reports rather, I'm sorry, had a significant impact both domestically and internationally. In 2011, the New Zealand government announced a ministerial inquiry into the foreign charter vessel sector. The ministerial inquiry resulted in wide-ranging regulatory reforms. The foreign charter vessel sector and other matters amendment bill announced in 2012 was enacted in 2014. The bill requires all foreign vessels to be reflagged as New Zealand vessels by the 1st of May this year. So that's come into effect. What reflagging does is it strengthens the government's ability to enforce, for example, New Zealand labour laws and health and safety regulations on migrant crew fishing in our waters. That project in turn led me to my current research. I am researching on behalf of a coalition of non-governmental organisations the extent to which exploitation is occurring in land-based industries. And predominantly, it is migrant workers that are being exploited. Some are on the periphery of the labour market. They're employed under precarious conditions. Some have worked for low wages. Indeed, some have worked for no wages. Unspecified deductions are made from their wages and some are denied basic rights, such as the right to go to the bathroom while they're working. Some migrants dependent on their employers for visas have viewed themselves as prey. Some have been charged a large amount of money in order to obtain employment that would enable them to apply for residency. For some, their time in New Zealand is full of broken promises 
and the fear of being shipped home. They are in a precarious working situation. Thank you.